teach you how to make homemade chicken stock. This classic recipe is the best base for any dish. Hi, I'm Caitlin with Cooking with Caitlin, and today we are at Mackey Quality Meats in Finley Market. For your chicken stock recipe, you need the bones of one whole chicken. If you don't have your bones left over from roasting your chicken, you can always ask your local butcher for some spare bones. Let's get cooking. Hi, I'm Caitlin with Cooking with Caitlin. My mom always saved her spare bones after roasting a chicken. So today I'm going to teach you how to make a great chicken stock using the leftover bones from your roasted chicken recipes. For this recipe, you're going to need the bones of your roasted chicken. Then you're going to need one part celery, one part carrots, to two parts onions. That's called a mirepoix. It's the kind of classic base of every French dish. For the sachet, or the herbs to this dish, you need the parsley stems, two bay leaves, and some peppercorns. For this recipe, it's kind of a chop and drop. You literally cut your vegetables and then put it in a big sauce pot. First, you want to drop your chicken bones. The difference between a broth and a stock is the whole chicken is used in a broth, so you have meat and bones, and then for a stock, it's just the bones of a chicken. Next, you want to take about three long pieces of celery and coarsely chop those up. Next, you need one part carrots, or about four medium-sized carrots. A great thing is, if you're not gonna let this cook very long, cut them into smaller pieces. That way you can get as much flavor as if you had cooked it all night long. And finally, your onions. You just wanna cut it down that way, and then cut it in half, and clean it of its two top layers. That's where most of the dirt usually is. Just peel back. And just quarter it, pretty much. For the last bit of flavor, you wanna add your herbs and seasonings. About two dried bay leaves. You wanna make sure that you keep them whole so that they're easier to find in the end. Parsley stems. And finally, about half a tablespoon of cracked black peppercorns. Once all of your prep is finished, you want to take this to the sink and fill it up with enough water to cover all of your ingredients. Then you're going to take it to the stove and put it to about a medium-high heat. Once you get to the pot to the stove, you want to turn it to medium-high heat. Once it comes to a boil, then you want to lower it to low heat and let it simmer for as long as you're willing to wait. About four hours would be great. Through the magic of television, this pot has been boiling and simmering for about four hours now. It's time to strain it. You want to let it cool for an about another hour so that when you strain it, you make sure you do not hurt yourself with any steam or hot liquids. When straining it, you want to make sure you get all the fine pieces out. So if you don't have cheesecloth handy at your house, you can always use paper towels. Make sure you just line the corner, all the holes, and put it into another pot. For your last step, you want to add about a tablespoon of salt. I always use kosher salt because it's not as salty as iodized salt. That way you can control the amount of salt in a recipe. Stir that up and you're ready to serve. Now that your chicken stock is completely finished, you can cook your pasta in it for a lot more flavor or simply soups and sauces. Thank you for tuning in to Cooking with Caitlin. For more classic recipes, please check out cookingwithcaitlin.com.